Hey guys, I'm Rebecca Busick and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So let's get into what we're here for. Uh, today I'm going to do like a basic foundation tips and tricks kind of application using the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation Plus Concealer. Um, I just got this recently. I've only tried it once. I'm kind of testing it out. Uh, this is in the shade... 0.5 breeze which is the lightest shade in the range I did go into Ulta to get color matched but I think it's too light for me I felt really ghosted out yesterday but I think I liked the overall finish so I'm gonna test it a few more times so I can see if I want to exchange this for the next shade up um, but anyways um, so that first thing I recommend with foundation is to prime your face. I use the two the Too Faced primer set or fresh hangover three in one. This is like a setting primer setting and like refreshing spray. And this is pretty moisturizing. Sorry. Um, and gives your skin a little bit of like a tacky, just a slight tacky feel for the foundation to kind of stick to. If you have like fine lines or a lot of pores, you'll want to go in with maybe like a pore filling primer just in the areas you have those concerns um, and press them into your pores or your fine lines. I sometimes do that, sometimes not. Usually just out of laziness. I do have pores um, in my cheek region and like right through here, but a lot of times I'm just too lazy. But I do always spray this just to give my skin a nice like canvas for the foundation to go on to. They also make mattifying primers if you're really oily. They make hydrating primers. So find a primer that's right for your skin. Um, but I just think it gives your skin like a nice start, a nice base before you put on your foundation. And then you'll want to make sure you get color match. So figure out if you have pink undertones, which are cool undertones, or more like yellow golden undertones, which are warm undertones. So you'll want to find a foundation that matches your undertone as well as the general shade of your skin. Uh, if you're not sure, you can go in store to like Sephora or Ulta and they will help you figure out your shade. Um, but that is the basics as far as priming, figuring out your shade. I'm just going to take this thing as a giant doe foot applicator and dot it around my face. And I'm just kind of looking in the, my phone for this part. I personally prefer, um, normally my skin's pretty good, but I got some zits right now. I personally prefer to put my makeup on with a damp beauty blender. Well, I look real cute right now, but everybody is different. Some people prefer brushes. I find brushes to be faster. So if you just need a really fast application, I, that's what I used with this yesterday was a, um, brush but if you just need a fast application try brushes i prefer a damp sponge because i like the finish better to me it gives a more natural skin like finish um and i'm just gonna start pouncing this into my skin gently um you'll also want to if you're a foundation beginner figure out what kind of coverage you want i prefer a full coverage or at least medium but i prefer a full coverage foundation just because I like the way it evens everything out because I like more I guess full glam kind of makeup um so I just like the look of it I don't really need it per se um because I'm pretty lucky and I don't usually have a ton of breakouts although I do right now but pretty lucky I have pretty good skin but if you just want something that's gonna like even you out you'll probably want more light to medium coverage um versus full if you like the more like full glam look, you'll probably want a full coverage. Also, if you have, you know, obviously um, skin issues, you might want a more full coverage to cover those. Um, and you'll also want to figure out if you want more dewy, like that more glowy, lifelike um, skin, which is what I've been preferring lately. Um, or if you want matte, if you're oily, you're probably going to want a matte if you have dry skin. You're probably gonna want more dewy, glowy finish. Uh, if you have like normal, to normal skin, you can kind of go on either end of the spectrum. It's just gonna be your personal choice. But I'm just really working this in. The more you blend in your foundation, the more flawless, 
blended and lifelike it's gonna look and you'll wanna be careful around your brows. My problem areas are this smile line. Foundations always kind of sink into those and around my nose. Those are kind of my problem areas with foundation. A lot of times foundations kind of collect in that crease of my nose there and that they don't look cute. But yeah, basically I watched a Wayne Goss video once. Well, I've watched more than once of his, one of his videos. Um, he's a professional makeup artist and he has a YouTube channel and he's amazing. Um, and he said basically the difference, I'm going to apply a little more foundation over on this side because I don't think I applied as much. So basically the difference between like professionals with, um, how they're able to get the skin to look so blended and flawless is the amount of time they spend blending in foundation. He said probably a professional makeup artist could spend as much as 10 minutes blending in foundation. Which most of us are not spending that long. We don't have the time to do that in real life. Um, but that was what he said was kind of the trick. Oh, excuse my, my daughter trying to get in here. My two-year-old. Hold on, Rory. I'll get you a hard-boiled egg in a minute. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I'm just pouncing and pressing this in, making sure it's blended. I blend kind of into push into my hairline a little bit, so I don't have like that gap between my skin and my hairline. You'll also want to make sure you bring your foundation least under your jaw. If it's a, not a good shade match, you'll probably want to bring it down your neck. And I just kind of drag for this part because, you know, I'm not, nobody's really going to be looking at that area. But if it's really a bad shade match, you'll probably want to take it down further. Another um, kind of tip I've found for this kind of hard nose area, it doesn't look cute, but if you take your nose and kind of pull it to the side, you can kind of get in there and blend that area. You could probably use the tip of the beauty blender for this so it would fit in there better, but I have all my product on the butt, so that's why I'm doing that. I know it's not cute, and then you'll have to go back over and blend over where you touched. I know it's not cute, but it does help me get in that area, which is harder to get into. You can also kind of stretch and go like that. And then once you, everything's blended out, then I go in with concealer. And you'll also have to figure out what you want out of your concealer. I prefer full coverage uh, concealer because I like a full coverage foundation. So it would look kind of not strange, but it, you know, they pair well together, full coverage and full coverage. So that's what I like. I like the Tarte Shape Tape. This is in the shade Light. There's other foundations I like, but they're more medium coverage to me. This is the fullest coverage I've tried so far. And I start in my inner corner where I have the most darkness and then I just bring it out a little bit. I don't put as much on as like the beauty gurus, but I start here and I put the most coverage where I have the most darkness. And you'll also wanna find out or figure out if you want a more highlighted effect under your eyes, you'll wanna go a shade or two lighter than your foundation color. If you want, if you don't want that highlighted effect, go as close to your foundation shade as you can, your skin color under your eye. And if all you wanna do is just cover the darkness, you can just put a little foundation where your darkness is and tap it in with your finger rather than doing the full blown like heavy triangles. If you want that real highlighted Instagram YouTuber effect, you know, you can blend your foundation out into the, or foundation, your concealer out in the triangle shape to give you more brightness and lift under the eyes. Um, I don't do as extreme and I'm gonna put, I do like that more highlighted effect. Um, because this foundation's so light on me, my concealer is not looking as light as normal, but I do like that highlighted effect. So I'm gonna just balance out the center of the face with a lighter concealer to bring that lightness into the center of the face. And I don't typically, like I don't actually really care about my nose being highlighted, but my nose, it gets so red. I like to put the concealer there to um, kind of cancel out more of the redness that the foundation 
a lot of times doesn't seem to cancel out. And now I'm just gonna blend here. And then I always put my under eye concealer on first because if you let your under eye concealer sit for a minute, it kind of slightly dries down under your eyes and then it won't blend out as far. And that gives you more coverage out of your concealer because it's not going to spread as far because it's just slightly gotten like tacky, slightly dried down. If you watch Jackie Ina here on YouTube, that's like her, her signature move. She lets her concealer sit. She lets hers sit for quite a while. That it scares me how long, honestly, she lets hers sit, but it works for her. So I don't let mine sit as long as she does, but and if you want to make your nose look slimmer too, you can bring the lighter concealer down the bottom like bridge of your nose here. And that'll bring lightness there and make your nose look a little slimmer. And then you always want to make sure, see that inner corner of your eye there? We have a lot of natural blue darkness right there because the skin is thinner there. So you want to make sure you bring your concealer in there. And I'm going to carefully blend this out. I normally do my um, my eyeshadow after my foundation and concealer. So normally I don't have to worry about like messing up my eyeshadow. So I'm going to be careful. But you see like that didn't go as far as it normally would have um, because I let it dry down some. I'm going to look up to avoid creasing. So if you look up, it stretches the under eye skin and helps avoid creasing. And I am pulling the concealer down slightly into that triangle um, effect that we're used to seeing, but I'm not doing the like extreme, you know, YouTuber, Instagram that we see. Like that can look really heavy if you put so much product under your eye. I mean, it's beautiful in pictures, but in real life it can look kind of heavy. So, so I do like a nice coverage and I like to pull it out some, but not so extreme. Now I'm going to do the same over here. And I'm just, because I want the most coverage right here, that's where I'm mostly pressing rather than spreading the product really far, which is going to thin it out and thin out the coverage. And now that I've blended, like pressed the most right there, then I'll kind of slightly take it into that triangle effect but not as extreme as we're kind of used to seeing and again trying to look up i have to when i look up there remind myself not to wrinkle my forehead too much because i haven't set my forehead yet and i'm gonna try and kind of cover that zit a bit um i haven't set my forehead yet so i don't want my forehead lines to crease and i will bring it down just the side of the nose just a little can see we've got that really nice kind of bright under eye but it's not like crazy I might add the tiniest touch more to this side I feel like I didn't get quite as much product over there but just like a dot like a little I feel like I didn't get as much coverage down over there and I'm just gonna mostly focus that right there and down a little bit And I like to, because right here is kind of a problem area for me, just whatever foundation is on the tip of my beauty blender, kind of press into that area just to lock it in a little more. And then I prefer to use a loose powder under my eyes. Uh, this is the Peach Perfect um, Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. And this smells like peach and it actually tastes like peach, which is kind of crazy. Um, but... And I don't bake typically unless I'm going in with a really sparkly eyeshadow. Um, I just kind of like lightly set and press this into the skin. So I do take it on the beauty blender tip there and kind of tap off. And like you see, I, it's on there, but not near as much again as we're used to seeing. I start in the inner corner where I want to set the utmost coverage. I look up and I just kind of press it lightly around in that area where I put the concealer 
and I'll do the same thing over here. And you don't want to press really hard because you don't want to pull up any of the concealer. Plus you want to be gentle with your under eye because that's the most sensitive skin on our face. It ages, increases, and wrinkles the fastest. So, And then just everywhere I put concealer, I will take a small amount on my beauty blender and just press it in to really lock in the concealer areas. And I'll take some into my smile line since that's a problem area for me. Like I'm not really, I'm not baking because this is all like pressing into the foundation and my skin. Not going in with like an excess amount of powder. And then just lightly, um, whatever kind of is on here, I'll go again into that problem area around my nose. And this is to just try and really lock that area in. And then the rest of my face, I just take a big um, powder brush. This is a limelight powder brush. And I just kind of dust around because if you don't set your foundation, unless you have like really dry skin, and sometimes even if you have dry skin, depending if it's a really tacky foundation, if you don't at least slightly set it, um, it can be really kind of sticky and tacky and make it hard to blend your bronzer and your blush on top of. Um, so I just lightly set and I press it in rather than sweeping to try and make sure I'm not disturbing any of the coverage I've given myself. You see, I haven't even dipped back in in a while. I'm just kind of lightly pressing and now I'm going to do my bronzer and blush really quick. And I'm using a Limelight Perfect Bronzer, which is that center one. And this is just a Aesthetica P12 brush. I got it in my BoxyCharm. It's a really flimsy kind of brush. So this is the Burt's Bee Blush in Bare Peach. Kathleen Lights got me started on this. If you watch her, you know her obsession with Burt's Bee's blushes. And I had to go pick it up. See, I watch a lot of beauty YouTubers if you're not if you're not uh, catching on to that so I kind of smile and I put blush more towards the top of the apples of my cheek tend to kind of lift it make it look more youthful and then I blend back once I've got most of the product just on my cheek and I blend back a little bit and I'll kind of just blend that just with whatever tiny bit is on the brush blend it everywhere I'm gonna highlight I'm not gonna highlight as much as I normally do because you see I've got this cute pimple right where you highlight but I'm gonna highlight a little bit with the MAC Hyper Real Glow in Flash and Awe and I just take all three colors and this is an Anastasia A23 A23 and I'm just gonna lightly now it's just like a tiny one dip in each band you can see this highlighter is pretty reflective bring it up just with whatever's left on my brush here I'm gonna finish up my under eye really quick. I use the Alomar Cosmetics palette that we got in BoxyCharm this month. And I'm just gonna go in with Coco Taxi and Tropico and just kind of smudge those on my lower lash line real quick. And I'm just going to pop an eyeliner in my waterline, whatever I can find. Hello, hello eyeliner. Oh, come on, there's got to be something in here. This is a ColourPop uh, eyeliner. It's just the, their black eyeliner. I'm not actually sure what the actual shade name's called, but it's just the ColourPop, ColourPop, ColourPop gel eyeliner. I'm just going to kind of run this in here just to add a little more dimension. I'll take my highlight and I'll just pop in a little inner corner highlight right here for my pinky. I just did the lightest shade in the Flash and All palette. 
should also use a brush for this. I'm just being kind of quick. Went down a little low, so I was just kind of trying to blend it out a little bit. The NYX Hyper Worth the Hype Mascara. I've been liking this mascara recently. All right, and now the final suggestion I have for foundation concealer application. Put a setting spray on top of it. I don't know if I really believe the setting sprays prolong the wear of your makeup or not. Um, you know, there are certain ones I think lock in a little bit more like the um, Urban Decay All Nighter. But one thing I am convinced the setting sprays do, and I love to do it, is they meld all the powders together, sink them into your skin, make everything look more skin-like. Um, if you're using something more hydrating, it'll bring more, back more of that dewiness, which I prefer. If you're using a mattifying one, it will mattify your skin. But I just like the way it melds all of the powders in, and it, to me, really makes your highlight pop. So I'm going to use, again, the Hangover RX one. This is my favorite. I wish the mister was a little more gentle, but I love this one. I'm going to fan myself while it dries. All right. So actually pop on a little lip gloss. This is the Clinique pop splash lip gloss plus hydration in rose water pop. I got it free from the Ulta gal at, at, um, the Clinique gal at Ulta to help shade match me. I do think I'm going to end up going up a shade because this is really fair. Um, but so far I think I'm liking the formula. So I kind of want to try it a few times before I, I decide if I'm going to buy another color and return this one. So this is my foundation routine. Hopefully I included some tips and tricks that were helpful to you guys if you're just beginning with foundation. Um, I didn't, I never do my videos with any like notes or really a plan. So it's kind of just off the top of my head as I was going. You know, I had pre thought of things, but hopefully, I rude, my phone, my tripod squeezed a button on my phone and it cut me off. But I didn't, um, you know, I didn't come in with any notes. So hopefully, I said everything that I intended to say. Hopefully, I gave you guys some good tips and tricks uh, for what may work for you. If you're newer to foundation or if you've been wearing it and you're just struggling a little bit with some certain areas. And that is it guys. I will catch you on my next one. Uh, before I go, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. It means so much to me. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite foundation is. I'm always on the, t the hunt for a good foundation, especially if it's a little bit more dewy or like natural satin finish um heavy matte foundations i haven't found have been looking very good on my skin lately so i'm more like natural to dewy is kind of what i'm more in the market for right now uh, so let me know what your favorites are i like chatting with you guys in the comments and if you have any products you want me to test out let me know if you want me to do a look with the alamar cosmetics palette on camera let me know and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.